go ahead and get started. If you would, turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 3, and we're going to pick up right where we left off last Sunday night, and uh, or not last Sunday, two Sunday nights, whenever it was. But uh, last Sunday night, or sorry, whenever it was, um, we talked. To, we talked about. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. No, I'm super loud. You need to start talking quieter. Oftentimes, and then we'll uh, talk about a couple things, and then we'll be done. I'll be respectful of your time. I know you guys have had a very long week. It's been a long day, so. We will get right into it. Verse number 10 says this, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile or deceit. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them, that do evil. Just to review really quick, I talked about this kind of a, a little bit with the teenagers in this morning's class, is that God wants you and I to love life. God did not come, die on a cross, rise again from the dead, save you from your sin to throw a wet blanket on your party. He did not come and do all of that so that he could be in heaven with the baseball bat waiting for you to mess up every single mistake. Wow! A lot of times, as a young person, God, or you start to think that God is just wants to take all the fun away. The truth is, when you understand Christ as life, He wants you to love life, to have good days. Uh, this last week, we had a lot of fun. We went up Friday, we went up skiing and snowboarding. Uh, we, you know, down at the bottom of the hill after each and every run, people would be talking about, oh, did you see that one? Oh man, he, I didn't get it on video, but man, he caught so much air on that first jump. Oh, did you see this? Oh, did you see that? And everybody's talking about the fun that they had. And the Christian life is an awesome life. The Bible says a merry heart do it good like a medicine. Look, you want to get around somebody that is going to encourage you, that is going to bring life to that situation. You want to go on a road trip. You don't, you don't want to go on a road trip with someone that's just like, uh, uh, miserable. This is horrible. Being a Christian is just no fun. You don't want to go on a road trip with that guy. You want to go on the road trip with the guy that's like, Woo! Man, it's a beautiful day. The cup is always uh, half full. But the Bible says, hey, if you want to uh, love life and see good days, which God has in store for us, let's keep our tongue from evil. Let's see that we don't speak deceit. Uh, for the eyes of the Lord, it says, are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Moving on, verse number 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? This word here, followers, has the idea of having a zeal or being zealous after the things that are good. And so look, there's a lot of things that you and I follow. You know, if you have Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media network, you have followers and you are following people. We can follow things that aren't very important in our life when it comes to all of eternity, right? But God is saying, I want you to be zealous about the things that are good. Um, in verse number 13, when he says, who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good. Something we have to understand, if you're gonna love life and you're gonna see good days, it is so important that we be zealous and followers of the things that are good. So go through your life and say like, hey, where does that, what category does this fit in my life? I'm zealous about it, whether it's sports or a hob whatever hobby it is. 
Is this something that's good? Ultimately, the one that is good is God. The Bible says in verse number 14, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. You know, when it says, And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? By and large, if you find yourself zealous about good things and you find yourself to be a follower of God, the chances are the normal, the normal part of that type of life is filled with good results. It's not filled with a ton of suffering. It's not filled with a ton of heartache. In fact, when you find yourself following that which is good, there's a lot of rewards that come with that. Whether it be health, whether it be wealth, it doesn't matter. It, it's when you're following that which is good, there's a lot of rewards. When you obey the law, there's a lot of things uh, that are in your favor. When you disobey the law, there's a lot of consequences that come as a result of that. So when the Bible asks the question, who is he that will harm you if he be followers of that which is good? In other words, it's not the normal. It's not normal that if you're following Christ, the normal every day is like, hey, uh, your normal day is going to be filled with peace and joy. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to love life. But verse 14 raises this question. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. It's this picture. We'll keep it really simple. Peter has come through in the first book of Peter and he's saying, hey, here's Christians who are suffering. Uh, they're being persecuted for their faith, but they're full of joy. They, they realize that they're a, a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood. They're, they're equipped. They're... Uh, they're, they're equipped to go through this life. And he, uh, he points out to them that your life is going to be good. But if you should suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you? Because you know, you know where you stand in all of eternity. And then he says this. He says, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. How many times can the world look at us, look at our life, we, we're, we're trying to do good, we're trying to be a follower of Christ, and yet God allows some trial to come into our life. And when we will take that trial for what it is, allowed of God, and the Bible says that, uh, it says, for it is better if the will of God be so, verse number 17, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. But when we go through that trial as a child of God and somebody comes and asks us, the Bible says, be ready to give an answer to, to them. Uh, let's see. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, Peter is the one writing this. If you'll turn back in your Bibles to Acts, go to Acts chapter number, let's go to chapter number four. Acts chapter number four. We're going to get an example from Peter himself about giving an answer of the hope that, that is in him. You guys remember in Acts chapter three, there was the lame man that was laying there and, and uh, People are going in and out of the temple, and uh, Peter comes by, and he asks of them alms. He says, Peter says to him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Um, the Bible says that 
there was a lot of people murmuring and complaining about this. And if you look at verse chapter number four in Acts chapter number four, and uh, let's look what it says in verse number five. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing. When they commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them as manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no to no man in this name. And they called them, they commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. You know, when we're challenged in 1 Peter chapter number 3, if suffering should be allowed to come into our life, if someone should persecute you in the middle of loving your life and they speak evil against you, uh, God says, hey, I'd rather you suffer for well-doing than evil-doing. And I want you in the middle of loving life to be ready to give an answer to anyone that comes to you and says, what is going on in your life? What's the hope? What, why are you so happy when this is going on in your life? How, how can you get through this trial? And Peter gives us one example. That's one of many where Peter says, um, hey, and, and I like how it said, and they were ignorant and unlearned. They didn't, have, they didn't have degrees. They had just, you know how we can give an answer to anybody that asks us? We just spend time in God's word. We get to know him, right? You don't have to go to school for that. If you can read and, and you say, God, will you show me yourself? Will you give me an answer to where I can be ready? Look, if you're ready, Guess who God's going to send down your path? Someone that's going to ask you a question. And every now and then, they'll ask you a question and you're not ready. You know what it does? Oh, man, I'm going to go find out. I'm going to go find that out. Rick, Alice, I guarantee you it's happened time and time and time again. You have patience. That conversation comes up and God uses you to just open your mouth. Here's the answer. You know, people that we work with, People we bank with, people at the store, people on our team, they're watching us. They're seeing how we handle situations. They're seeing how we raise our children. They're seeing how our marriage works. And then they're like, uh, you know what? I've, had, I've been in a situation before where I've had a husband or multiple husbands in one spot in a conversation just trash talking their wife about this or that and the other. Oh, you know, you know how it is I'm like, no, like our marriage isn't like that. We're good. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. It's not like we have a perfect marriage, but I'm just saying when you have something that is, is done how God wants it done, you don't have that kind of baggage. And that's when people are like, Hey, what, what's the reason? How, how do you guys, you know, what's the secret? What's the secret sauce? And then you are able to just point them to the Lord. Say here, this, this is the answer. So, so check it out. Two things today. Two things, really. 
uh, who's going to harm you if you be followers of that which is good? In other words, you know what the normal is for someone who's following Christ? It's a life that, uh, uh, what is that verse? Um, a joyful countenance or somebody help me. Uh, I, I know there's the one that's a merry heart, do, does good like a medicine, but that's the normal Christian life. The normal Christian life is uh, you're feeding on the word of God. He's sustaining you. Um, you're content and it radiates from your face and it lets people around you know like, hey, I would want to go on a road trip with that person. I would want to hang out with that. I want that person on my team. I want that person in my church. I, I would definitely want to barbecue with that person because there's life there. And when there's life there, so be followers of that which is good. But, and if, the Bible says, when God allows that suffering to come in, when he allows you to suffer even for, even for well-doing, you have Christ in you and you can... Be ready to give an answer to those that ask, why do you have hope? And you know how we're going to find, we're, you know how we're going to be ready to give them an answer? Is just by simply spending time in this book. Kids, if you can read, spend a few minutes in this book. Start the habit now of reading God's word. Because if you just, oh, someday, someday when I... You know, after I turn 18, I'm going to one day I'm going to get up early and I'm going to do this or that. When I get married, when I have kids, when I and someday turns into never. But if you start understanding who God is and you get to know him now, then guess who God's going to put in your path? He's going to put someone in your path that you're going to just happen to have the answer for. Um, and you'll it's going to be crazy because sometimes you'll get an answer. God will speak to your heart about something and it could be seconds. It could be within seconds that God puts someone in your path that needs exactly what you have for them. Amen. Right. Seriously, it's crazy. Scary crazy. It's cool. It's cool. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I love you. Thank you for being good to us. I pray that you would help us to be followers of that which is good. Help us to be zealous of, of the person of Christ, to get to know you through your word and help us to open our mouth and be ready to give an answer to anybody that you would put in our path so that we could explain to them why we have hope in this life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, you guys.